Welcome to this segment of Soul, Silence, and Sound. This is brought to you by Be Simply. Stars, trees, clouds, and the moon. They all have a meaning and they look just like you. Silence and Sound. This is this week's dharma talk suzanne style and are in between the new moon and the full moon and today we're going to talk about enable no more and how it has the invitation to deepen your empathy compassion and empowerment self-empowerment so here we are and a lot of societal things are breaking down not only in the world around us, also in our subconscious and conscious minds and actions. And there's a lot of moving parts and all we can do is be responsible for ourselves. And so typically what happens when these cycles start getting cleaned up, it's, there's a propensity because again, I talked a little bit about this last time, you know, we, we point out all these generations, but Remember that if we go to the quote unquote silent generation, they literally weren't allowed to speak. And a lot of that has come full circle to this point in this past four years where people have really shut down other people's voices and ways of thinking based on fear. And the silence way back then in the silent generation was out of fear. And so something really crucial happens when anyone, person, place, or Uh, entity decides to take away your voice by intimidation, by being a bully, by manipulation, all kinds of things by their own insecurity, by their own wounds. And what happens is the person, people and places that were destined to be the victim of this moment here on planet earth they still are used as a scapegoat because it's really hard for the mind to decide, wow, I've been actually enabling the bully. I've been enabling the manipulator. I have been enabling the dysfunction in our society. And that has continued through this past four years in the brouhaha because fear took over And people have a fear about their life, their mortality, and they decided it's easier to enable this situation versus really diving deep inside. And in society, there were many people that had to make decisions for something that most people can't understand. And through that process, depending where they were on the planet, that might have been a easier or more difficult. If you were in a region that was very oppressive and controlling and wanting to have you be controlled based on a narrative, then the people and places and things around you might have contributed to this concept of manipulation and bullying by proxy. So right now, this is this moment to really check yourself, check yourself. Have I, do I continue to enable the manipulator, the quote unquote, wetico, the poison in the mind, the narcissistic traits that our society has used media and all sorts of things, ideology in all aspects of life to control humanity. And if the answer is yes, which I imagine for each and every one of us, there's still a yes there where it's hard to let go of that enabling piece. And so for those that are reaching that crossroads for yourself, you might start to feel some heat and anger rising. We still are in the Northern hemisphere in the energy of anger, emotion to get in touch with this emotion and to help process this emotion by keeping our physical, mental, and emotional being well. And if we suppress our voice and this anger and grief for our brothers and sisters on the other side of the 
earth plane is that what happens is this is what is used to manipulate and control the individual. They look for the wounds. They look for the victim. They look for the fear to keep one from being fully empowered. So today I one want to encourage each and every one of you, if inspired to really look at where you're enabling the wolf in sheep's clothing and those that have in plain sight, you know, you have a system that most people don't understand how it works on this earth plane. And then you have from there, um, a series of steps or tiers of people that have cooperated in this moment, unbeknownst to them in certain cases, and then beknownst to them, they agreed. And so each one of us agrees on a daily basis when we continue to feed, quote unquote, the system as it was known. Now, in order to change this cycle so we don't go back full circle to the silent generation, to the boomers, see where I'm going? So we don't repeat this long cycle again. It requires each and every one of you to pull out of enabling. Now, as I mentioned, it's hard, it's difficult to do it all in one fatal swoop. So you want to be specific to where you can actually hold the line. And first, I would encourage you internally, where do you silence yourself? Where do you silence yourself? Where do you look away? Where do you look away on the inside? These are difficult conversations to have with yourself and to really say, I'm going to look in there. I'm going to really look in there. And if you need help, reach out looking in there because it can be overwhelming when you open that up and get radically honest with yourself. And then as you do that, you'll get a, a glimpse of one or two things that really stand out to that maybe have been historic over this lifetime and see where you've enabled yourself. And then from there, you can start practicing cleaning that up. And what it means not to enable yourself means that you're going to choose to be interdependent with society, that you're going to be a part of the system that creates well-being for the whole. And the only way that that can happen is if you start to be deep in your relationship with having inner union and interdependence with the ecosystem around you. And remember that, as I mentioned in the last segment, there are no fixed points. We're constantly shifting and changing. And when we get hyper fixated on maybe the dysfunction versus the function, or when we don't look at that dysfunction and say, how can I bring it into function? We don't say, what do I need to do to move out of that? And it'll take strength. It'll take a lot of strength, but you can do it. I, I know each and every one of you can do it. And then as you're practicing that, as you're, you're refining this area where you've been enabling yourself, and I can give you an example is that you've been, uh, basically kidding yourself that you really have been taking care of your physical temple. And maybe you know that you could do more, meaning that there are areas that are showing imbalance, but you're turning the head, you're staying silent about it. You don't want to go there because your fear, remember, fear is the, the thing that you want to eradicate from the system. You're afraid of what that can mean. For a lot of people, they don't want to address balancing their system because they're afraid of dying. Again, this is what held all of humanity hostage over the past four years. Well, guess what? We all do this. We all go through this cycle until we, maybe we all evolve and then we can be uh, enlightened beings all together and see what that's like. But right now we're in this dance where we enable energies that don't serve at all. You know, we can bring that pendulum in. So it starts from within. And so if you can look at that spot and say, oh, 
I've been enabling myself by telling myself that it's okay, I'll get to that later. Oh, I don't have to look at that. I'll just ignore it and get to that later. That's like really feeding the weaker aspect of yourself and ignoring the thing that your wisdom keeper, your higher self is telling you, you need to look at that. And that might come through your mental, physical, emotional, or and or spiritual body. And then on the outside, that this is the same thing that can happen is that you see maybe an injustice, you see something that should not be that way, yet you feel like you have to be silent, that you can't speak up, that you can't bring yourself into integrity with your relationship with that person, people, and or place. And so this is that time to pick an area that you have been enabling internally and externally. And the external enabling looks a lot like this, that you know, based on your path in this lifetime, that let's say uh, organization, make it bigger, like on a macro, is uh, not integral, that they don't have your best interests, they don't have humanity's best interests, yet you pretend that they do. And so then that organization still has your buy-in. And so that might be as simple as not shopping at that place anymore. That might be as simple as canceling a subscription. It might be as simple as not distributing, let's say, uh, through that organization. Bit by bit, if that occurs for each individual, it will create change. It will create change. We're in this dynamic aspect of the world that constantly is changing. It could also look like your interpersonal relationships that you've been enabling. You don't want to say anything, quote unquote, bad about someone. And how I uh, really encourage my clients and my students is that it's okay to state what is, meaning remove the emotion. But if something happened where you were taken advantage, you were abused, you were hurt, you were manipulated, whatever it might be, you can state what is. And you don't have to broadcast it, but you can. You have that right. And this is always a quandary for people on their healing journey because maybe they know someone that's much perceptually much bigger or powerful than them, and but they know. And maybe it wouldn't be prudent for them to announce that depending how uh, that person operates in the world. However, they can be matter of fact with their immediate surroundings if asked, or they might share with their immediate surroundings, word of mouth. This is important because what happens is you will have someone that's been manipulated, harmed, all these things, and people know it. They know it. Yet they choose not to do anything. And that's what got us into the situation that we have all these generations, you know, they say it's seven generations from an indigenous standpoint. Let's say it's that plus more. And now we're here for, for full circle, excuse me, full circle. Here we are again. People have been silenced. They continue to be silenced. And it's that moment for you to get clear. So choose one thing on the external and the internal world that you no longer going to enable. And choose something that's um, doable in this moment. Because if you choose something that's going to create a lot of chaos in the present moment, it will diminish your ability to have momentum and detract from the your strengths in this moment too. So as you choose that place to shift and change, then you have the ability from there to then once you, okay, I cleared that out. I'm not going to engage with that person anymore, that place, that organization, that company, those people. Once the, that's solid and you have it anchored in, then you can move to the next thing and the next thing. This is how you bring yourself into integrity. It doesn't happen overnight. And the same with your internal. It's like, wow, I'm going to get really clear on how to be more integral with myself, more integrated into my environment and have this relationship of interdependence with nature and the universe versus one that is enabling and completely keeps that cycle going on. 
And so bit by bit, imagine billion, a billion, couple billion people start doing this, which has been happening over the past four years, but it has a ways to go. But you're really being supported right now because of these thresholds. And then the other part of this, you have the internal, the external, and then you have this aspect that if you're willing to humble down, meaning that you might in this process get more information and willing to give up what you thought you knew. Because typically once we finally like admit that a relationship isn't healthy, that uh, a work condition isn't aligned with you anymore, that once we admit to this without blaming anyone, just owning it for ourselves, that usually more information comes in. And this is where kind of that metaphorical and literal veil will drop down because all of a sudden the things that you weren't willing to look at or really own during your relationship with yourself and or others, you see. And then that's where you humility, humbling down is super important. Also, you will see people's true colors in this moment, meaning your external world, the people that come and are supportive of you in the process, the ones that detract, and understand that anything falls away that can be healthy for you because it creates more space for you to come into alignment with yourself. And this is also a process that might have additional grief and anger. And as I've reminded everyone, especially during the spring season, all emotions are available to support us. And so if you're tired, like you don't want to be angry, you don't want to be grieving anymore, you can look for joy, like be celebratory, like, wow, I don't have to have these people, places and things in my life anymore. How freeing. I get to be around authentic people that I want to be in reciprocal relationship with myself. And that aren't coming from a fear-based reality. And so there will be some cognitive dissonance for yourself and others. And then there's this other aspect that you have to really be willing to not be bothered with people projecting their perception of you. Because as you come into integrity they might perceive you as a threat, especially if they're a smokes and mirrors kind of person where they're not radically honest with themselves. They're used to manipulating. They're used to taking versus receiving. And that's okay. It'll, it'll all appear. And this is what's happening right now. These, these things can't be high hidden anymore. And in a spiritual practice, you can pretend all you want, but faking it doesn't get you anywhere. There, That's the beauty of cause and effect. That's the beauty of how mystical and magical and unexplainable this universe that we're in, how it takes hold of all that we do in a way that's just wild. It's so powerful. So I, I encourage you, you know, to really take some time between now and the new moon or whenever you're listening to this, it's perfect to really get clear where you're ready to really step into that interdependent relationship internally and externally. And then where you're ready to like humble down, where you're ready to let go of the things that you've been holding on to that are actually limiting you. And this aspect of, you know, when especially relationships disappear or you're holding on to them and they're not healthy, it's so beautiful when the universe really forces it upon you because it's like, okay, you got that? Like, it's just not meant to be. And that's going to get stronger and stronger as we go through this process. So if inspired, take some time, look inside, look outside and choose one thing that you're ready to really move from enabling your inner landscape to becoming interdependent with your inner landscape and your natural ecosystem that you, where you are at this moment and on the external world too. And this then finally, what would you'll feel much more empowered 
And then you're going to be pulling yourself into more authentic empathy and compassion. So if you're spending time listening to these talks with me, uh, I would imagine that you have a propensity that you want to improve yourself, you want to feel strong, and you naturally have empathy, which is fantastic, and you naturally have compassion. What will happen if you enable historically throughout this lifetime you might have too much empathy, fake empathy and fake compassion, meaning you do it because it's the polite thing to do, yet it's not authentically being given. And so as we all step up into authenticity, it's important that you look at that and you don't have to take this all on. It's the time to bring everything into reconciliation and Those that are in the taking seed, it's time for them to reconcile too. And I hope that helps you at this moment. And if you have any questions or any uh, feedback, feel free to reach out to me. Now, I want to welcome each and every one of you to come into the meditation portion of this segment. If your mind is historically active, that you or and or you have mental pathologies that ca- cause you to have a lot of visions or maybe you get into manic phases of your life i welcome you to come up into an upright seated position and stare at a focal point or you've had a lot of trauma all of those i want you to keep your eyes open and stare at a focal point during this meditation and you'll use that focal point in your breath to ke- help keep you focused And then if you're a person that has a pretty much empty mind and you're a seasoned meditator, I welcome you to close your eyes or stare at the focal point. Both are equally valuable. And as you find your perfect gaze, I welcome you to extend your spine up. Take a nice gentle breath in. And out. Again, inhale. And exhale. Another one, inhale. And exhale. And as you continue to breathe in and out, welcome you to just gently dip a little deeper into your inner world.
Gently from there, I welcome you to gently lean back and recline or move fully into Shavasana, a prone position on your back with your palms facing upward as we transition into receiving sound. As you settle in, just take a nice gentle breath into the heart. and out again inhale and exhale and one more inhale and exhale And then continue to follow your natural breathing pattern.
taking a soft, gentle breath in and out of your heart center, gently breathing in and out. Again, inhale and exhale. Another one, inhale. And exhale. And then gently, when you're ready, rise up into a seated position, sending that spine up and dropping your shoulders down. Taking another deep breath in. And out. Again, inhale. And exhale. Another one. Inhale. And exhale. And then gently from there, as you bring your presence back to my voice, I just want to encourage each and every one of you, if you have the space, to stay a little bit longer. Take some time to write down some notes that you realized about your inner and outer landscape. And if inspired, really choose a spot on the inner and the outer worlds uh, where you're ready to no longer enable yourself and you're welcoming yourself to come into alignment with interdependence from within and with the outside world. And just choose one thing uh, on the inner and outer world that will make it easier and then you can build upon that. And remember that uh, practicing something can basically take anywhere from 60, 90, or 120 days to really deepen and welcome in some balance and some anchoring in for where you're putting yourself in this world system. And then from there, it'll continue to build. If you do it for shorter, it's kind of like herbal supplementation. It should only take 60 to 90 days, sometimes 120 for the supplementation to rebalance. And then you can release attention on it. And the same would be this around 120 days, you will really have some deeper truths. It may not be perfect, but you'll have anchored in the opposing behavior that should have a strong enough hold to assist you moving forward. And then there might be another layer, but it, it'll be really strong, at least with awareness. So from there, I want to thank all of you for taking the space for yourself today. I want to thank Kadri Scott, Randa Rapp, Dante Marino for contributing here. In addition, we're going to exit out with little Kadri Scott, Fields of Flowers. And if inspired, please support the arts, support creation in a new way. It's going to be a purified way here on the earth plane. And until next time, this is Suzanne signing out with a full heart, a soft gaze, a deep bow, and a namaste. Be simple.
tree